Hey guys, Zox from 7th Hour Films back again with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Last time on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, we had The Empress, where uh, it was actually a Joseph episode. Isn't that great? Uh, Joseph actually did something uh, where uh, he was basically infected by the Empress stand, and he had to figure out a way to get rid of it. Uh, he initially tried Hermit Purple, and that didn't exactly work. Uh, he also actually tried using Hamon, but that didn't really work, until eventually he figured out how to, basically, he, he dunked it in tar to harden it, and then used Hermit Purple to just yank it right off, and that also killed it and killed the stand user who, uh, Polnareff was trying and failing to flirt with, and then after that, they all left. Yeah. This is where I say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever. This is also where I say that if you want to watch my reaction to this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, what you gotta do is head down in the description or to the pinned comment, click on the link there. There's also an alternative link in the description if you would rather try that one out. Uh, but that will take you over to the reaction. You can watch it just like any normal reaction, and when you're done with that, you can pop right back over here to this video where you can watch the discussion, which I always highly encourage that you do. So, yeah, that is pretty much that. We should go ahead and get into this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Here we go. That is so weird to watch all of them. They're just laughing at him. Even Jotaro is just, like, genuinely smiling. That is so crazy. Um, I guess that's what I was going to write. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, all right. Alrighty, folks, that's episode 13, The Wheel of Fortune, another one where, boy, the the author, the rules of stands, out the window, what, what are rules, what, what are stands, I actually need to grab this because I do need my notes. Rules, what are rules? This is JoJo. And I know... It's... It, I know it's odd that... It's now that I'm figuring out... That the rules of JoJo just don't apply. Like, they can just do anything. Especially after Boat Stand. But... I just... It, like, like, at least Hamon had pretty defined rules, you know? Hamon had pretty defined rules. And Hamon could do a lot of stuff, you know? And there are some things like the... Like when, you know, Lisa Lisa used, like, the Hamon hypnosis, basically, on Suzy Q. You know? Like, there, there, there are some weird things... With Hamon, even you know the Hamon healing when Baron Zeppeli first you know, you know puts his puts his finger inside of Jonathan. Uh, but you know, and then you know his arm heals. Lifting this rock is like nothing. But still, still, I feel like there are there were very defined rules with Hamon. Stands felt like there were defined rules, and then the author was like, yeah, but no. And then the rules just went out the window. What What are rules? This episode was a car chase, and it's cool. I like the car chase. It was a fun episode. I'm not sure what this has to do with the Wheel of Fortune, you know? 
Like, of course, you could say that about all their stands, you know? Like, Hermit Purple or, you know, Silver Chariot. Silver Chariot. The Chariot is just the dude in armor. You know? The Empress was a little, like, you know, parasite. The Wheel of Fortune is just a car. Strength is a boat. Like, it, I guess it doesn't matter. Magician's Red was a buff chicken. Like, what does it matter, I guess? So, whatever. Um. Alright, let's, uh, let's, let's go over the notes. Screw it. Let's go over the notes. The first thing I wrote down is Anne. Anne's back. You know, after, after they left Singapore and they showed that Anne was still with them, I was like, okay, so where is she? Because she was not in The Emperor and the Hanged Man. She was also not in The Empress. So she's been, she has been gone. And it's like, so is she still with them? And sure enough, somehow though, she not only, not only did she catch up to them, but she got ahead of them, not knowing how they were going to get, you know, how they were going to get to Pakistan, they just, she just somehow got ahead of them and was able to hitchhike and then found them. What? How? How can she do that? I don't know. And I know, you know, they are kind of like, oh, this, she's just in our way and stuff. Like, she's going back to, uh... Well, did they say she's going back to Hong Kong? Wouldn't she need to go back to Singapore? I don't know. Because they... Well... Well, yeah. Oh, that... Yeah, because she says she ran away from home. Her home would be in Hong Kong, because that's where they met her, was leaving Hong Kong. That's right. She made up the story about the dad in Singapore. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Um... Honestly... I do kind of just want to keep her now. I do want to keep her. She honestly is our, you know, our Poco or Smokey in that she's there. She doesn't do a lot, but she's there. You know, she's our small companion to our main Joestar, to our main Jojo. Although this time she has a crush on Jotaro, which, um, which Poco... And Smokey did not have crushes on their JoJo's, so. But, to be fair, Smokey and Joseph did definitely have a bromance going, you know? Joseph had a bromance with everyone, though. Like, he, he had a, he obviously had, the, the biggest bromance was with Caesar, you know? But he even had, sort of had a bromance with uh, Wamu as well, so... Yeah, I have to say, when when Jotaro came out of the ground and he didn't have his jacket on, he just had the, the tank top, he finally looks like a Joestar. <laughs> he finally looks like a Joestar. When he is just wearing a shirt with no sleeves, that is the classic Joestar look. That's what Jonathan wore, that's what Joseph wore, and Jotaro finally looks like that, you know? And I don't know why, like, you know, sometimes, like, when we're watching the intro and we see, you know, Jonathan and Joseph and Jotaro, you know, in those sequences, I have to say, it's like, Jotaro doesn't really look like them. Like, he, he doesn't really look like he's related to them, and I think that's mainly just because of the different art style, you know? Because Stardust Crusaders has a different art style to Parts 1 and Part 2. But there, when he took off the jacket and it was just him, you know, you could see... You could completely see his arms, like, that, that is the classic Joestar look, you know? Which, I mean, heck, even Joseph now is almost rocking that. He, he kind of has sleeves, but for the most part, like, well, he, I guess he does have the gloves because he's got the prosthetic hand, but still, he's still kind of got that look going, so, so yeah. But yeah, and we're keeping her, and... I, I, I severely doubt they're going to go with... Like, it would have to be years from now when she actually grows up that they could even possibly do a relationship with Jotaro. 
So I don't see that happening. Um, besides, the main JoJo's are uh, into blondes, you know? Jonathan Jonathan had Irina, and Joseph had Suzy Q. The, if you're a main JoJo, if you're a JoJo protagonist, basically, then uh, you generally go for blondes, you know? And I have to say it so specifically because George Joestar II went for Lisa Lisa, who was not blonde, so... But main, main Joe stars go for blondes, you know? Anyway. Uh, we had the truck. <laughs> so that truck did just, like, it just was there, you know? That truck would just was there. And somehow... So basically, they were about to crash. But before the car hit the truck, Star Platinum came out. And hit the truck so that the truck took most of the hit. You know, or at the very least, Star Platinum took most of the hit instead of their car. Interesting. Also, never let Polnareff drive again. Polnareff clearly should never drive. You know? Um, but yeah. Uh, I wrote down Carman. Sure enough. Carman! He's a Carman! Anyway, yeah. Um, that was weird. Again, it's just like, this is definitely a, I, mean, I don't want to say this is like a filler episode, but it's one of those like, all right, this, th that happened next. Like we got to go through all whatever 22, uh, tarot cards. Um, no, I don't have the wheel of fortune. Hang on. No, the wheel of fortune isn't a real card. Ah. Uh. The Wheel of Fortune isn't a real card. Um, so, if you're curious what these are, probably. Um, these are the Arcana Force Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Based on tarot. Uh, except these two. The Light and Dark Rulers are not based on any tarot cards. But I've got uh, Arcana Force 21, Zawardo. Uh, the Moon, which we had Deep Blue Moon. So there's that. Um... Here, hang on. I want to keep these in order. So, Zawardo, uh, the Moon, Yellow Temperance, uh, the Chariot. So we, I've got Silver Chariot. Uh, the Lovers. We haven't seen the Lovers yet, so that'll be coming. Uh, I've got Whole Horse. I've got the Parasite, uh, R.A.P. Avdol, and the Fool, which we haven't seen yet either. So, yeah. I've got Arcana Force cards. Uh, by the way, this is it. That's all of the Arcana Force cards they made. There is no Star Platinum, which is unfortunate. Or Hierophant, or the rest of them. So. But they have Zawardo. Saying it like that just sounds dumb. Also, yes, I, I know the meme Zawardo. It's one of those inescapable things. So. Luckily, it doesn't tell me spoilers. It, it basically tells me nothing other than Zawardo. Um, anyway. So yeah, Carman. It, it, it does sort of feel like a filler, you know, Monster of the Week, which I mean, we've had that basically. But it's just one of those, it feels like one of those, like, all right, we have to, you know, we have to just you know, get through it. We have to go through all 22 tarot cards, basically. We have to go through all the tarot cards. So here's the Wheel of Fortune. He's a card guy. All right. Sumo. <laughs> so that was weird. Uh, the whole sumo thing where... So Hierophant Green attached their car to his car. And then Star Platinum basically yanked on it to drag the car down while also putting their car over and then crashing, basically. And it's basically a sumo move. I don't know how that works, but okay, that was kind of funny. It was very crazy, but yeah. This is honestly like, as I was watching this, I was like, man, Jotaro seems a bit different today. Like, he, he almost seems like a bit lively, a bit more lively, like... He's almost, like, happier. You know, he or he's a bit cockier in this episode, which is interesting. So, I, I kind of liked it. You know, he, he started reminding me of Joseph a little bit. 
but yeah that was that was interesting um and then yeah carman is the wheel of fortune okay um oh we did have the talk about Anne being a drifter it's like i'm a drifter that nobody loves and i just wanted to see the world which that's interesting it's like oh she just wanted to see the world and she couldn't do that from hong kong so she left and then she met up with the gang and now she wants to join them someone's gonna have to explain to her though that abdal's dead so so i mean it's like yeah welcome to the team abdal's dead you know it'd be crazy if she developed a stand that'd be really crazy um but yeah i mean she's got she's got a little fight in her you know she i mean hey she she had her like knife and she was gonna like take on all of them you know uh when we first met her so yeah i don't know uh, but I also like when, uh, you know, she's saying all this stuff and it's like, and then Jotaro just goes and picks her up and it's like, if you have time to say all of that, you have time to run away. You know, that was really funny. So, uh, shooting gasoline. That was, that was creative. I didn't see that coming. Shoot gasoline. Okay. That's shot gasoline. So, so hard that it was like a bullet. But that explains why, obviously, there was they couldn't see anything. So, I mean, that is a little clever. And, hey, you're being creative with the car stand. Anyway. Uh, and then, yeah, Jotaro lost his jacket. Which, I mean, his jacket's just gone. There, unless he just finds a new... A new Japanese high school jacket. I don't know if he's going to find that in Pakistan. But maybe. Or just a... I guess he could just find a new jacket. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, his jacket is gone. But definitely, when when it was revealed that he just you know took off his jacket, um, that that was the moment where I was like, oh boy, he really looks like a Joe Star now. So I did like that. Um, and now, uh, and Yaba is going to take care of the gang herself with her stand, the Justice. Which, because I mean, that's the thing is that. I guess, was the last time we saw Dio in Strength? I think it was, actually. Yeah, it was. It was at the beginning of the Strength episode where, you know, Dio's like, I I cannot underestimate the Joe Stars. You know, I cannot, yeah, I can't underestimate them. So I should go and deal with them myself. And then Inyaba's like, no, they suck. Don't do that. I've sent seven people. And then those seven people were all defeated including her son who was killed and then she's just like oh I, I will have to go deal with them myself and it's like i just want it to cut back to dio because she even says like i cannot face lord dio with this shame and it's like i just want dio to show up and be like so who has two thumbs and told you not to underestimate the joe stars this guy who has two thumbs from Jonathan Joestar because he because he destroyed my actual body? This guy. I have to use Jonathan Joestar's thumbs because you can't underestimate the friggin' Joestars. So, yeah. I'm glad. Which, hey, I guess we're going to take care of her next. She's next up on the chopping block. She's next up on the chopping block uh, for a stand we're going to get rid of. But yeah. But then who is Dio going to talk to? I don't know. There's no one else there. I don't know. Maybe Whole Horse shows up or something. Who would you rather talk to? If, if you're Dio, who would you rather talk to? And Yaba or Whole Horse? Uh, maybe he should just be alone for a bit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Fun episode. I, I enjoyed it still, even though, yeah, Carman is ridiculous, but whatever. I'm just gonna start getting over it now. I'm just gonna accept it. This just stands, stands are bullshit, basically. It stands, they just are. They just are. No more are the concrete rules of Hamon. Now we have stands. And we're going to keep having stands. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. That's all I got. Uh, with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.
Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.